We're going to talk about energy. The next few shows are going to form part of a series that talk about different issues relating to energy, what energy is, how it works, how it interfaces with the universe, how it affects our physical health, how we interact with other living beings, how that works in terms of relationships, uh, interactions with family in the workplace, everything, because I think as we're going to hopefully show, the universe is an energy being. So show one, really, for the new year, for 2016, is an introduction to energy and the energy universe. Sarah's here, and between us we are going to talk it through and hopefully explain some things, hopefully make it interesting, and hopefully you will then want to listen to the further shows. So let's let's look at the world of energy. What What is the energy universe? Okay, so what are the big questions that you find people have about this idea of an energy dimension is, you know, is it here? Is it there? Do they believe in it or not believe in it? What, what bugs people in your experience about it? Um, the biggest thing that uh, people always say is they want proof. They, want, they, they almost want convincing, where it's not to be convinced because they're actually working with these senses all the time, even if they're not massively aware. But they always want proof. Yeah. I think that's how we conditioned, isn't it? That proof has to be physical. You often hear physical proof. You often hear those two words together, don't you? That's something, if I can't touch it or taste it or measure it or weigh it or sell it or whatever, then it doesn't exist. And that's that's the constraint, isn't it? That yeah. on the physical dimension, you can't sort of prove in physical terms anything that doesn't exist on the physical dimension so it's almost let's think of an analogy almost like you can't smell color if your only sense was smell and somebody said oh there's green red and blue you go well prove it to me it's absolutely impossible but it's there that it's what we interact with all the time even when people tell little stories how they might feel things or they get a a gut feeling or all these little sayings that people use and they experience it, they'll still say, but I want the proof. How do I know that it's not my brain or it's just how it is? It's almost like even a little bit of proof to them is not enough. That's a good point. We we use our intuition all the time and the biggest force in our lives, emotions, is spiritual energy. You you ask ask a doctor where the uh, emotions are in your body and they'll look blank at you or they'll say, oh, it's all in the brain. (laughs) So... Because they are physicians, as in consigned to the physical, but you, the biggest force in anybody's life is passion, intuition, hope, fear, hate, anger, frustration, nurturing, care, love. This is the the most powerful force in our lives, isn't it? And yet we're sort of, it's consigned to, well, that's sort of mental or that's sort of not really there or you just sort of accept it, which when I was looking at it, it's quite bizarre, isn't it, when you look at it that way? Definitely. Also, to me, it it seems even more ridiculous that we wouldn't have it. <laughs> because otherwise we'd all just be like robots really going around we could tell ourselves what to do there'd be no how would we stop ourselves from how would we'd be able to stop ourselves from making mistakes or we'd be able to just do something but there's this other thing this energy as as you're just explaining that actually interacts and changes everything yeah i once had a, a conversation with a very intelligent gentleman who was assuring me that the the universal energy or chi energy or life force whatever you want to call it or the ether as the spiritualists like to call it doesn't actually exist and all of these things that we experience are all mental things are all chemicals in the brain that uh simulate or create this this experience of emotions and i thought that was pretty interesting and i i know that many people do believe that what of course shoots a hole in that is that things like for instance uh, chinese medicine which has been based on the effective flow of chi for thousands of years and has been very effective completely shoots holes in that and yet somebody who's so intelligent can just dismiss thousands of years of history of a set of disciplines that really work as oh well that's just that stuff isn't it so I think, I think there's a lot of social conditioning to if you can't measure it in a laboratory and you can't put a meter on it or send it to the CERN collider and find a particle, then it doesn't exist, yeah? Yeah, definitely, because the proof is actually there, like you say, Chinese medicine being a really great one. I think this whole thing of alternative as well, that I think what, what science has done to a degree 
is anything that is not grounded in physics is alternative. And yet yeah. you, you see it now, we're discovering that it's actually not, it's the other way around. It's um, that it's sort of mainstream and that, that our consciousness, our energy consciousness never dies. It lives on this plane of energy for every life. You cannot create or destroy energy in the physical world. Anyone that's done high school physics knows that. You cannot create or destroy energy. You just change its form. The same is true with the metaphysical energy in a different form that is not living on a physical plane but on a parallel plane on which we live both at the same time. So I always like to use the analogy of um, a fabric. A fabric has threads running in different directions and that one thread is us living on the energy plane and the other thread, the adjacent thread, is us living on the physical plane and they're sort of interwoven. And when you die, you just lose the physical part of it. Your, your energy doesn't exist on the physical plane and then travel to this mysterious energy plane. It exists on it all the time. Again, there's people like to throw stones at me about that one. Is that the spiritualists particularly say, no, no, your energy exists in your body on the physical plane and then goes to this other place actually doesn't exist, it exists there all the same time. But that plane is omnipresent. It's around us everywhere at the same time, interwoven in with the physical plane, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. So basically what happens is that energy that's always there, always in the same place, on the same plane, interacts and works with our physical body whilst we're here, alive in this form. And then when that life ends, the energy still remains where it has been and always will be. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost too simple sometimes, isn't it? And maybe people I, always want hmm. more. <laughs> I think also that, that because we are a primary consciousness that's trained as a physical consciousness, consciousness, that everything has to have a time, a place. So when you die, your energy, according to that sort of physically trained ego, has to travel somewhere. Yeah, it has to it ge geographically relocate, and of course, it doesn't. It just exists in the same place, um, which is which is everywhere at the same time. It, and um, that sort of brings us into ghosts and how come a ghost will appear in this place, not the other. But something we'll go into a, in in a future show because that's a, that's a, a really interesting point, and it's a little bit more complex than we're going to cover in the first show. But I agree with you. This whole thing is that we exist on two parallel planes at the same time and that you can never have physical proof of metaphysical meaning beyond physical elements you can't smell color and you can't see you can't see sound anybody that studied physics knows that there's electromagnetic energy that's the energy that that uh, is tiny brain impulses are made of the same energy that make your cell phone work on your tv work and the little impulses you're listening to my voice and Sarah's voice on whatever device you're listening to, that's all electromagnetic energy and that's all pretty well understood as part of the physical universe. It, however, has nothing at all to do with the spiritual energy universe and a lot of um, modern day disciplines really get that confused. So you get sort of quantum, neuro, metaphysical, spiritual, psycho, and they just mix everything up into something that's sort of nonsensical. Um, and this is because of a need to make energy which has no shape, form, or physical uh, elements to try and sort of give it physical elements, assign it physical attributes in order to do what the brain calls understand it. So we often visualize energy as different colors. Now, spiritual energy doesn't have colors. Uh, that's the ego superimposing those sort of symbols onto it. So it's a, it's a filter that the ego puts onto the spiritual energy to sort of make it acceptable in the physical world. And so there's a lot of this idea that your brain, these tiny little electromagnetic signals in the brain, somehow signal the energy universe to do things. Well, not at all, because it, they, they don't have anything to do with each other. The spiritual energy is feelings and intuition, passion, love, hate, fear, anxiety, happiness, nurturing, caring, all those things. It's nothing to do with colour and shape. That's the ego's need to quantify something in, in physical terms. And so what's made that even worse is some of the old transcripts and some of the old ways which do use colour and symbolism in order to try and make it more acceptable that's more digestible that's been interpreted literally that this is a yellow energy as opposed to a, a sort of 
symbol we've slapped on it. Does does that make sense? Yes, definitely. So hence the fact we've got to the stage now where it's completely losing what the initial meaning was and people are now trying to make it into something that it's not. Yeah, so you get um, you get a lot of disciplines, modern disciplines, that confuse sort of psychological trends of behaviour and thought patterns with energy, when they with spiritual energy, when they really uh, don't link in that way. Uh, you can't, for instance, you, you don't interact with the universe via thought. You interact with your intuition, which is an energetic thing, as opposed to visualising and thinking. And and so what you tend to end up at in popular culture now is a mixture of metaphysical, physical, psychological, all over the placeness, mm. and people re- generally don't sort of appreciate that the, the spiritual energy world is a completely separate world from the physical world, and, and it does not use electromagnetic or quantum forces, and therefore physics and quantum physics can never access it. It's completely impossible, because it's a completely separate way of dealing with things. And in order to get back to really dealing with your energy, you have to dismiss all that and not try to see energy or visualize it or make it a shape or a color or a symbolism or understand it, but to work with the basic feel and sense and intuition of it because that's how it manifests in us. It makes us feel, it makes us sense. And what the ego is trying to do is trying to put labels on that, it's trying to validate it and quantify it. That's why we need to not try to understand energy because what the ego calls understanding is putting a a shape and a form and a colour and a cause and a purpose and effect and a a trigger and an outcome and all of those sort of things onto it. Energy, spiritual energy just is. It, It is. There's no negative or positive energy. There's no male or female energy. There's no good or bad energy. These again are ego superimpositions on top of it. Energy is flowing or not flowing. It's sort of one type or another. But the, this ego's need to superimpose it as good and bad or male and female or whatever is, is part of the reason that we, in order to really work with energy, we have a process which we're going to talk about in another show called ego death, where we remove all this symbolism and we work with it in its basic form through sense and intuition and expression. Like you say, all emotions are valid. They're all, we experience all emotions all the time. Yeah, there's no, there's no good or bad so emotion. So anger doesn't, shouldn't be seen as being bad and... Definitely not, no. Anger, is, anger is a, or, Definitely not. Nope. Anger is as valid as love and passion and hate and fear. And it, it, again, the ego has, has you know, decided these and filtered these. It's also made it hierarchical. And this is something the spiritualist movement has done very much indeed. They've made it hierarchical that certain spirits are more ascended and more... That makes them sort of unreachable. And because in the ego world, everything is hierarchical, better or worse or greater or smaller. Or In the energy plane, it's all the same. So my energy and your energy and God's energy and the devil's or whoever is all the same. Energy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just energy. And so everything is accessible by everybody all the time. But the egos need to make it hierarchical. Is It comes from a little bit, certainly with spiritualism, a little bit like religion. Some religions say you can only access God through us, you can only access God in this way. And um, some disciplines like to say, or some beliefs or religions like spiritualism like to say, you can only access that energy, that otherworldly energy that you don't have access to via somebody called a medium who is then the channel can give you all that. It's not tr- absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. And also it wouldn't make sense for it to be that way. Why would we be given an energy and the, uh, the ability to only do these things through another. Yeah. You may need help and guidance and definitely... You need training uh, how to do it. Absolutely, you've got to be trained to do it. Yeah. The ability to do it ourselves is still there. It's interesting talking about that. The training, we, we do need training. Because we've been yeah, trained in the way of the ego, we trained. need to be untrained from that. But a lot of people think that their intuition will tell them how to do it. And the danger with that is they don't see where their ego is coming in. Definitely. And and one of the big, again, this will be another show, this will be about the show that talks about fortune telling and what controls the future and destiny and free will. One of the things people don't appreciate is without the disciplines, without the ego death, you will misinterpret that energy. You may You may feel there's an energy that somebody you care about wants to call you. 
and you could absolutely be feeling that energy right, that they, you, you're sensing that. But what your ego will do will add an interpretation on top of that and say, that means they want to have a relationship with me or it means they want to come over or they want to take me out to dinner. There's no energy that says, I want to take you out to dinner. <laughs> There's no energy that says, I want a relationship. You know, so so the, the cause and effect is being, and the purpose and meaning and significance is being added onto that. So you are picking up through your intuition, through your energy, you're picking up that somebody's you know wants to connect with you somehow. You feel that. But then to say, oh, it means they want to do this, that, and the other, that's an ego interpretation that's being put on it. Definitely, and also a very important point. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, we'll definitely cover that in the show when we talk about destiny and free will and how the universe deals in energy. So what the universe does not do is create physical events. The universe creates energy environments within which living things interact to create physical events. Yeah. So for instance... I find that really interesting, yeah. Yeah, so for instance, when, when you're not feeling it, you're very unlikely to do it. When you're feeling it, when you're sensing the energy is right, you're more likely to do it. So the universe doesn't say, you are going to go and do this. It doesn't say, Sarah, I'm going to move your legs and arms and make you go and punch your boss in the mouth or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it says you're going through a cycle now where you're going to feel that anger coming to the top. You're going to sort of have to deal with this stuff. Whether you actually go punch your boss in the mouth or say, take him out to dinner and go, hey, we've got something to deal with is entirely up to you. See the point? Yeah. So that's something yeah. we'll cover as well. That's something we'll definitely cover in future shows. Another thing that I notice a lot, it seems to be about labeling energies, male and female, god and goddess energies, and actually this isn't the truth, is it? We have a mixture of fire chi and water chi of energy, which represents both sides of this, but we all have both sides. Yeah, absolutely. That Again, the ego world, the world that man has created with his, his symbolism and icons tends to symbolize compassion energy. Water chi is compassion energy. It's it's like water. It's nurturing compassion, love. It's the softer emotions. Gentle. And that's that that's symbolized by water because indeed water flows. It's gentle and flowing. Um and that symbolizes female energy. Oh, that's how women are. So it's as if men are not supposed to have compassion. And then the, the fire chi energy, which is which is raw passion and fire and lust and anger and all that sort of stuff, is sort of made to be the masculine energy. And women women are not supposed to have that, which is which is ridiculous. What we're, we're all supposed to have an equal balance of it all. We're not not fifty percent of one, fifty percent another, but hundred percent of both. Yeah. That 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 we can be totally compassionate, but at the same time be powerful. And um, particularly the fire chi energies have a very, uh, which are the anger, passion, all those sort of things, are like fire, they tend to flare up. And they have a very significant effect on healing the physical body because when we get all fired up like that, we get very hot and flustered. And there's a reason for that, is that these fire chi energies really do push through the energy channels and just really open the body up and, and give us give us our mojo back, get our body self-healing going, get us livened up, lift the pulse rate, do all sorts of things. They're very, very important indeed. That doesn't mean we have to go around wanting to punch the hell out of somebody all the time. <laughs> Raging because, around the place. <laughs> exactly. But the, 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 the idea with the fire chi, which is the hardest energy to uh, manage, is that it's a, it's, a, it's a simmer, not a flare up or dead, you know. I mean, most people's <laughs> energy in the way we're trained to be is like a little candle or an explosion. It's never in between. And the, the, the training is to get it simmering all the time so that you're neither going to punch somebody's head out off, but you're also not going to wimp out when somebody says, hey, I've got a problem, you know, and sort of tries to dominate you. You can come back and say, yeah, I'm being compassionate, but I'm also being assertive. There's my boundaries. So, so the balance of both energies and everyone should be able to be compassionate, but assertive. So, that, so the whole male-female energy thing is really playing to the ego again. It's got nothing to do with the energy plane. It's everything to do with societal iconography. It's also um, a very another interesting point about how when our energy isn't balanced, how that affects us greatly, either either way, because if you have too much fire chi or suppressed fire chi or it doesn't make, um, 
for a very healthy place energetically. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Somebody <laughs> with a very suppressed fire chi uh, will tend to be uh, not very assertive, hold everything in, feel very disempowered, and then get to a point where that fire chi just explodes in ballistic anger. And that's that's very unhealthy for the physical body because we need that energy to simmer. We need it to, to go through and, as we already explained, the fire chi is very much part of the, the physical body's uh, healing mechanism. So um, somebody with low fire chi it feels beaten down, suppressed, can't be assertive generally, and then will suddenly explode in anger at some point when it all gets too much, and then it all just comes out, crashing out. Somebody's got too high a fire chi will be explosive all the time. It's not being channeled. They're just completely explosive and dominant all the time, again, which is not balanced. And with water chi, if it's suppressed, all the emotions are being held in. Somebody who's got suppressed water chi, for instance, will keep their emotions in and will not let the hurt and the pain out. A bit like when the fire chi is suppressed, it doesn't let the anger and frustration out. When the water chi is suppressed, it doesn't let the pain and the hurt out. And it's as debilitating, not as debilitating physically, because the water chi is not as responsible for the physical body, but nevertheless debilitating in terms of balance. So somebody that's all water chi and no fire chi will be completely disempowered, emotionally gushing, uh, unable to find balance, and somebody that's got all fire chi and no water chi will be pig-headed, dominant, non-compassionate. And so you see these different manifestations of these different energetic imbalances. Society calls it personality. Society tends to say it's who we are, whereas energy work tends to say it's how we are. Because if your energy is in balance, the, the principle is that you, you should be perfectly in balance in how you deal with things irrespective of irrespective of whether you like chocolate ice cream or banana ice cream you would be balanced in the way you deal with things psychology tends to say it's further than that that it's actually who you are and if you're an angry person you're an angry person we in the energy world would disagree with that and saying somebody's energy is out of balance we can fix that and you become the balanced person you it doesn't change who you are it's more how you are Exactly. And also the labeling of saying that's how you are is actually trying to say you can't change that where you can change that. You change your energy, work with your energy. You can completely change how you react, interact, live your whole life because it actually affects everything. It does affect everything. And, and let's talk about something I mentioned earlier where the universe is primarily an energy being. The universe controls everything through energy. An interesting example of this is where people tend to get very confused is to do with something we touched on in a previous show last year. Astrology, for instance. People say to me, I don't believe the planets control what I do. And indeed, no, they don't. Because the planets are too far away on the physical plane for either magnetism or electromagnetism or anything out of gravity to affect you because it's not working on that level. What's happening is the position of the planets is synchronous with the cycles of universal energy. If you imagine the universe is one big machine, the planets are the hands on the clock, what cycle it's in. So the, those positions are not controlling you. Those positions are just synchronous with the cycles of the same energy that, that you are feeling, that you are sensing. That you can, we can definitely see through astrology where there's times when the energy around you is very challenging, times when it's not so challenging. How you respond to that is still to do with your own inner energy work, whether you're flowing or not. So if you're flowing, you're going to take those challenging times much easier. If you're not, they're going to be much harder. So how you live is an amalgam or a, a mixture of the forces around you from the universe and how you flow or don't flow. But the planets is not the physical position of the planets that control you. The way I explain that is um, the ego thinks of everything as cause and effect. So we are trained to say, if we see an effect, what was the cause? Or if we have a cause, what will the effect be? If we press that button, will the bell light or the buzzer go off? Or if the bell lights and the buzzer goes off, who pressed the button? It's, but it doesn't work that way. That's a cause and effect universe. The universe, in, in actual fact, is, is synchronous. What that means is, if you have a watch and it says one o'clock and you get hungry, 
in cause and effect logic, either the hunger created the watch to say one o'clock or the watch saying one o'clock created the hunger. And the, the truth is neither. They are synchronous. Your, your body's physical cycles and the hands on the watch are synchronous. So it points at one o'clock at the same time as you get hungry. It's not cause and effect. Yeah. So it's all one, one big energy pool working together. Yeah. So the position of the planets in this universal mechanism is, is, synchronous synchronistic with the cycles of energy because it's part of the same mechanism it's not the planets yeah. are affecting you and whether you believe in it or not doesn't doesn't matter that again that's part of the ego thing you were talking about earlier with people believing it or not it, it doesn't really matter because it's affecting you anyway yeah so that's a really interesting point isn't it whether you believe it or not this that this is how it is so this again is something so I get into conflict with people now and again. They want me to convince them and I say, that's not my job. Yeah. My job is to teach you how to do it. It's the universe's job to convince you it's real. And that can be quite an affront when they sort of want, they've been thinking about it and they want to believe in it, but they may not believe in it, but they do want to believe in it. And, and they've got a friend who doesn't, a friend who doesn't, and they're trying to make their mind up. And I, I say, I'm not going to be the deciding factor. That's not my job. It's not. It's not my job you know, to to convince you water exists. It's my job to teach you to swim. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that can cause quite a lot of conflict uh, uh, initially until people sort of recognise, yeah, you're right, I, yeah, I can see this, so, I, you know, how does it work? So that's when this sort of work, the metaphysical work, tends to fall into two definite disciplines. Are you working with people's egos? Are you teaching them theories, principles, and getting them to believe in it? Or are you teaching them how to do it? Because you need to do it. That's the bottom line. Whether you believe it or not, you've got to do it. Do you come across people that think they can control their energy with their mind? Yeah. How does that manifest they, normally in the people you experience? Well, for a short term, I'm, they can carry on going, controlling also what they believe is controlling their emotions with their mind by thinking positive thoughts or... So they're trying to overcome pain and anger, is that what you're saying? Yeah, but then in the moment that something happens, it'll come along a situation and trigger, say, anger. You can't, it's impossible, you can't think yourself out of feeling angry. Anybody that has experienced anger, which is everybody, knows you can't think yourself out of it. It's a feeling, it's something that's there inside and you have to express that anger. You can't just suppress that or well, people do try and suppress it but it doesn't go away but you're saying ultimately we can't can we because ultimately it's, it's yeah. going to come out one way or another yeah people try and stuff it down won't they but all it also blows that whole theory of if you think something think positive thoughts it doesn't work because something will come along and make you angry which is natural we all feel anger as much as we feel all the other emotions that we already mentioned so it does go it does prove doesn't it that that Whatever you think, whatever you believe, whatever you like to believe, that, that these, this energy, these forces are the most powerful force in your life. Yeah, you can't control them. You can't override them because they're there. And it, it shows us this all the time, which in effect is actually proof for the people out there that ask for proof because it happens to us all. Yeah, th th I always say to people about positive thinking is one of the worst things you can do because if you need to positive think, it's telling you there's something wrong, that you're not yeah. feeling in balance. So that the, the very nature of the need to positive think, so the very essence of the fact that you're trying to positive think is saying there's a problem. And you, instead of trying to positive think, you need to go deal with the problem. Yeah. But again, I think that comes back to, oh, that's who I am. It's natural to not be able to deal with stress. It's natural not to have tools. I don't think that's true. If you're born in China or some of the Asian continent, you would have Tai Chi, you'd have Qigong, you'd have a bunch of different methods to deal with energy. It's it's more true in Western society, isn't it, where the, as I always joke, half-jokingly say, the Western uh, society approach to energy is get a shrink, get laid, get over it. <laughs> yeah. And don't talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely, don't talk about it and, and repress it and suppress it. People say to me, if, if I was to work with you, would I learn to control my energies? And I'd say, no, you'd learn the opposite. You'd learn to let them go. But you'd learn to channel it in a healthy way, not suppress it so that if your boss makes you angry, you can channel that anger without having to channel it at your boss. Yeah. 
Because that energy, you're right in what you say, that energy does come out, you know, it might, it'll come out, you might have an argument with a boyfriend and it won't come out then, but it'll come out in the checkout later when the lady in front of you has got 47 items that won't scan, you know, somebody's going to get that energy somewhere along the line, yeah? Definitely. It's there waiting to erupt, isn't it? That leads us into something else we're going to do in another show is relationships, personal relationships, and how they are often the channel in which we vent all this stuff and why that causes a great deal of problems because we vent our passion, our anger. <clears throat> we seek to be the way we get our primary nurturing so that it does load down a relationship with a ton of implications and often is what causes the problems that we we seek to have one person to whom we can vent everything, to whom we can get all our nurturing, to all our support. And um, relationships really often can't take that pressure. One person can't do it all. Can exactly, they? exactly. Now, this thing about controlling energy, um, analogy, again, I like to use is a bit like the surfer. The surfer doesn't seek to control the waves. He or she seeks to surf them. So rising on the peaks and, and dipping in the troughs, not trying to iron them out, not trying to sort of only have the high bits. The ego likes the high bits. The, the sort of <laughs> spirituality of ego is I want to be joyful all day long. People say to me, I want to be joyful all day long. I say, it ain't going to happen on this planet because that's like living in somewhere where there's only sunshine and wherever there's only sunshine, nothing's going to grow. The idea is being able to flow with anger, frustration as easily as you flow with joy and happiness because they're both sides of the same coin and just like that surfer it's the peaks and the troughs that makes the joy of living it's when you can't deal with the anger and frustration and sadness that there's no joy in living so it's not controlling them and making them go away those nasty horrible energies go away and only have the joyful ones like you've swallowed a banana sideways and you're grinning so much you make everyone <laughs> sick that's not that's not spirituality that's nonsense it's about learning to channel the anger, to channel the passion, channel the frustration. Yeah? Yeah, and recognizing as well, recognizing that when we feel however we feel, whichever emotion, and knowing that it's okay, that's how it's supposed to be. We're going to experience all emotions. Another thing people say to me is, that's all very well, but I live in the real world. And I say, what's more real than your emotions? And there's usually a big pause. Yeah, but I've got all these situations. I need to deal with these situations before I deal with my emotions. And I say, you've got that the wrong way around. If you are balanced, you're going to deal with those situations fine. If you're not, you're not. So your energy existence is the primary existence because if you are in balance, it doesn't matter whether there's one situation or 100 situations, you'll flow with it. You'll recover. You'll, you'll bounce back. Not a problem. If you see your energy as a sort of not real world sort of you know, out there, other consideration, your life will be driven by being unable to respond to a series of situations. And then what tends to happen is the situations will pile up and pile up and mm. get worse and worse. <laughs> yeah, so so people that say that, well, but I live in the real 3D world, I, I remind them, you know, that's a, that's a typical ego state, that is the ego being the societal disease that we're impregnated with, that life is, you know, is all about the physical things and nothing else, that really, if you're happy and balanced and flowing and able to deal with stress and tension, it doesn't matter what comes along situation-wise because you recover from it. And most people truthfully would like not to be able to react to that SOB on Facebook that winds them up every time they say something. Oh my God, you know that one again. I think most people would like to not, be, not have to react to that and be able to channel it if the truth was known. Do you agree? Definitely, definitely. But the missing piece has always been, for lots of people, the how. It is the how, absolutely. And, and that brings us neatly on to how do you work with energy? Well, you can't read about it. This, no. this, listening to this conversation is not going to help anyone change their energy. Because learning to work with energy is a skill, it's not a knowledge. It's like teaching you to juggle. We could give you, I, well, I can't juggle, but let's imagine both Sarah and I were master jugglers. We could give you a one-hour lecture on juggling. Yeah, you will not going to be able to juggle anybody. You've still got to get those things and throw them in the air and drop them a few thousand times. So books do not work. It's the ego again saying that somehow I can use concepts or knowledge or intellect to develop a skill. Well, it didn't work for swimming. I don't know anybody that's learned to swim for reading a book. So... 
the ego-based spirituality of where it's concepts and knowledge just doesn't work. You have to do the donkey work. Same as physical balance, you have to go and sweat on the treadmill and lift those weights. With energy work, you have to learn to channel that anger and frustration and stuff. And that's not something that comes intuitively, much as we think it does. Um, it's it's learning techniques. And um, I, I hear people say, oh, well, you know, I've I've cried all that emotion out. And I explain, if crying released emotion, I'd never have worked with anybody. <laughs> so we, we really don't know that we don't know how it works. And we're also unable to know how we can feel when we've always felt how we feel. Absolutely. We, we, yeah, sense. we've always felt that way. So that's me. That's the norm. Yeah. 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 It becomes how you feel becomes normal to you. So you can't imagine how it would feel if you did the work and learned to deal with the emotions and mm. situations and come, come up in your life as you're saying when you're taught to do that. You can't I, because you don't know it's possible at that stage. I agree. And I think the problem is this we were talking about earlier. The, the greatest sin that psychology has committed to me is having something called a personality. So it says, if you're angry all the time, that's because that's part of your personality, that, that's who you are. Mm. And, and people try and suppress that because they're trying to correct this, this personality thing, when in fact, if they're angry a lot, that just shows a lot of fire chi energy wants to come out. We can channel that. We can channel that in a very powerful way and set them free. But this idea of I'm an angry person, that's a sort of flaw in this personality. It's unfixable. It's who I am. It's wrong. I've got to struggle with the rest of my life. Is really ramming a cork in the bottle. It's making it worse, isn't it? It's making mm. them feel bad for how they're feeling and trying to suppress it but as we keep saying you can't suppress it then it comes back up again which repeats the cycle mm. which is damaging an angry people. person is not who you am it's how you am yeah. but it actually shows somebody it's got a strong fire chi and the interesting thing is some of the most powerful healers you'll ever meet have strong fire chi you won't meet somebody who hasn't had a struggle with their energy who later learns to use that very powerful energy to help others or animals or the world in some way. So that often the first manifestation of that great passion and that great power is by that it throws you around in life, that it beats you up and you 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 know have a, what people call an intensity. Oh, that guy's so intense or that woman's so intense. Another thing as well that I've, I've um, witnessed and is that just like with your physical health where you have to work at it every day or very regularly, you have to do the same with your energy work. It's not just you become healed. You have to work on that constantly. It's a way you live your life. So you completely change. You work with your emotions, your energy, and it's continuous. It's something you have to do all the time because if you don't, which I've learned that many times, it stops everything, your energy changes life becomes far more difficult to deal with all the uh, tests or except even just life interacting everything becomes difficult so anyway the most important part is it's a way of life and you have to use this and work with it continuously so what you're saying is basically that we live on the physical plane and we live on energy plane at the same time which sort of yeah brings us back to where we came in and that you must work on both you can't just work on your physical health yeah definitely did you find that, like most of us in Western society, you grew up uh, that people recognised you had to sort of work out and do sports and eat properly, but there was no recognition of any sort of energy health and emotions were just sort of, well, those are your emotions, you just sort of put up with them or shut up or that there's, it's just there, it's a given and they can't change? Yeah, 100%. Definitely. And as society, it's almost um, unacceptable to show your emotions. Mm. Yeah. That's how it's made. You're made to feel. You shouldn't speak up. And certain energies are good express. and bad. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it ends up with, it, with everybody expressing, with everybody suppressing, sorry, which is a very dangerous place. I think, I think one of the things is that because we don't recognize energies or the energy dimension or the energy plane are something separate that we assume that if we're going to release an energy it has to be released at the cause of that energy so the analogy we use with your boss if your boss makes you angry you want to go punch your boss 
it's not necessary to punch your boss to release the energy. That's what you learn through energy work, isn't it? That you, yeah. you detach from the cause of that anger or frustration or sadness. It's not, it's not that you don't get angry or frustrated or sad. You just learn how to channel it. Yeah. It's and it becomes a emotion. It's a, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. And that's it. It's an emotion. One Rather of the things... personalising it. Yeah. One of the things that uh, is really interesting, which illustrates very effectively, I believe, this... Um, idea of the physical plane and the energy plane being two separate things is um i get a chance to teach a lot of people to use their psychic ability not to become mystic marjorie on you know whatever dot com and sort of filch the clients but it's a natural ability to tune into more to what's around you that's a natural progression of the human soul to be more intuitive and um after usually working with people for a while, I'll offer them, and many people take me up on that, and they are constantly blown away by their natural ability. Again, this idea that uh, the ability to tune into other people is only super evolved souls, or these these um, people you see on TV that tune into Uncle Frank. That's not true. It's a completely natural ability in anybody. And one of the things I do, I get people to read half a dozen people I know very well. And... Um, they read them and they read them all perfectly because once they're using the energy, their ego's not in the way. They can't get it wrong. It's impossible to get it wrong because they're letting the energy talk to them. They're not interpreting. They don't have that layer of filtering that we talked about earlier. But one of the people is no longer alive, but they read them exactly the same. And I say to them, one of those people is dead. And they go, wow, they ch- I tune in exactly as if they were alive. And indeed, their energy has not changed. Just because their body's died, their energy hasn't changed. So, yeah. so it's actually one of the hardest things to do when you're really reading properly is to tell whether people are alive or dead or not because their energy never dies. Yeah. And as you mentioned earlier, it's on the same plane as it, as it always has been and always will be. Yeah, when you tune into them, they're not on some sort of ethereal <laughs> plane and they're not some super enlightened being that's going to come back and tell you the, the forthcoming lottery numbers. You know, yeah. they're going to reincarnate at some point in physical form to continue the lessons. But you can tune into them the same as you can tune into them, a, a person that's living. And in actual fact, it's, it's really, really hard to tell the difference. No, really interesting point, that. And, and I've been doing that for years, and it constantly shocks people. It shocks people how incredibly accurate they are because the ego is doubting their abilities. Once you take the ego out of circuit and you just use the abilities, the abilities are innate, they're God-given, so it's not a problem. Um, and once you take the interpretation away, uh, you, you, you lose the, um, the fortune teller thing where they pick up an energy of somebody caring about you and then interpret to mean Roger's going to call you Thursday and want to marry you. You know, they put that layer of interpretation. You take that away. And people are astonishingly accurate. It just shows the innate ability of everybody. And it doesn't matter how far they've gone along the road. Once you unlock it, the, the ability is amazing. And I say it's not just for fortune telling. It's, it's how we work with other people. An example of that would be, for instance, I've just worked with somebody who's, whose boss is at work is very, very aggressive and very intimidating. And this person, through having developed their ability, is now able to sense that boss is not intimidating. He's scared, he's weak. But the ego says he's dominating, he's powerful, and it's not. So that because they've developed their intuition, they can sense he's actually weak, and this is a massive overreaction to being intimidated. So they can then yeah. deal with it more effectively. So the intuition that working with the energy is, is the most natural evolution. And as I say, it's and as we'll come to see in future shows where we talk about soul connections, we talk about uh, healing, we talk about energy interactions, uh, destiny and free will. It's an energy universe with a physical dimension to it. And once we see how things work energetically, it makes a lot, a lot more sense. The proof that everybody seems to want is actually there for them to experience if they wanted to do that. that that's the uh, amazing thing. If they take effort to actually find somebody to work with who can teach them, they will find all the proof they've ever wanted in the feeling one of, one of the things, one of the th- yeah, absolutely. One of the paradoxes is people say, well, if I'm going to use my intuition, won't my intuition tell me how to use my energy? Well, no, because your intuition is clouded by your ego. Yeah. So until we can get the ego out of the way, we can't get you properly in tune with your energy to tell which is ego and which is energy. Once we can, not a problem. 
but at the moment it's all mixed up. So your, your innate abilities have to be unlocked by getting you to be able to sense what is energy as opposed to what is ego and what is, you know, what are those filters that you all have in place because of the conditioning. And to be Definitely. able to sense and know how to, for instance, the, the most basic, basic, basic thing is people don't know how to release sadness. And I've said this before. People think crying releases sadness. If it did, I would have never had a client in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't. We, we really don't know how that works. And you can't visualize it away. So the most fundamental things we're not taught... In a sense, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're not taught that we need to be caught up on. And once you've got that, then you can work with your intuition and use it. But your intuition won't teach you the skills. Well, which brings us back to the same point. You need a teacher. You need somebody to help you. You need somebody to hmm. show you what to do. And uh, you, you, Yeah, you absolutely. You could say, well, I can read what to do. You you can't read what to do because you won't know when you're doing it right or not. You won't, Exactly. You, you really can't. So, but... The point you were mentioning about healing as well, there's never a state when you're healed, there's never a state when you're flowing. It's always a work in progress. Same as physical fitness, we can always be more fit. Yeah. Physical fitness. And we fitness have to maintain it also. It's yeah. about maintaining, keep. If you get fit, then stop doing the daily exercises. Well, your fitness is going to decrease. It's the same principle. You have to continuously work on your energy too. Yeah, and I think something else, something else that we've just sort of proven, which is really quite important, is that with our two-dimensional um, thing about the world of energy, which is what this show is about, which is the fact that the energy plane is a completely separate dimension from the physical plane, but we exist on both at the same time. Uh, we always exist on the uh, energy, but we don't always exist on the physical. We all manifest and die and then re-manifest. Um, this whole idea there's mind, body and soul, that mind is somehow a separate thing, is absolutely not. There are two consciousnesses. There is a mental consciousness, which is um, to do with the physical body, and you get a new one of those in every life. And then there's the energy consciousness. To break those bits out and make them a third element called mind is very, very confusing. That's what confuses most people. So what is mind? And I'd sort of teach people mind is a fluffy concept. It's, it's not real. Your intuition as a consciousness has existed throughout time. Your, your brain or mind only exists as long as your brain has existed. So you can't, you know, that doesn't remember things in past life sort of things. You, you, your energy is experienced things in a past life, but you don't remember it as a thought. So again, this, this mind, body and soul model does not work. You are physical and you are energetic and they both have a form of consciousness. So the reason we can't do these things ourselves is, be, as you say, because we need to detach from that overly worked, overly developed, massive Popeye-like muscle of mental consciousness to let go and tune into the energy consciousness, but in the way it works, which is not in terms of shape, color, size, but of feel, sense, flow. We've talked about the general principles of living in two dimensions, the energy dimension and the physical dimension. Um, we've also talked about how we can't give you actual tools that uh, you need to learn those, but what we can do and what we will do in future shows is to explain about these energy cycles. We talked earlier about the energy cycles of the universe controlling uh, the future and how we respond to those or don't respond to those. And we're going to go into more specifics as we go down the line. We're going to have shows on things like karma, destiny, free will, soul connections, uh, how energy affects the physical body, how uh, challenging energy situations are there for, to, to teach us as much as easy energy situations. We are going to be breaking it all down. What we wanted to do was to establish the fundamental principles, though, be, uh, before we went any further with that, which hopefully we've done. And uh, we welcome questions. We welcome input. We welcome people that would like to contribute. We'll also be talking about energy interactions in terms of interpersonal relationships in specific situations like, say, the workplace and how a lot of times when you're trying to analyse people's behaviour, it's not a behavioural thing, but it's actually an energy thing going on. Um, I think I gave an example earlier of where somebody's boss seemed to be this big, pig-headed, dominant, abusive person. When in actual fact, they were absolutely scared and just 
were being triggered by this person and were overreacting. And so we can talk about the principles of how to see that and how to maybe at least start to learn how to change it. As well as our Facebook page, we also have the Flow Posse private group. It's free to join, but it means that we can have interaction and you can raise questions and any subjects you'd like to cover on the show. Also, if you have a story to share that you'd like to go on the show and tell us your experience and your story, we'd love to hear from you. So check out the Flow Posse group on Facebook and we look forward to hearing from you. Well, that's us. That's our show on the introduction to the world of energy. Hope you've enjoyed it. Say bye, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope bye. you all enjoyed the show. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>